joined now by our good friend Kyle Nedrip from the Indy Star. Sir, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you guys? Doing fine, Dustin Schutte. Uh, with me. I hope he's uh, ready to go because in the break you, you informed us that week one of high school football I mean, well, is actually next week, but this Friday are the scrimmages and the jamborees are happening. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? I had no idea that they were starting this soon, man. Breaking news. Wow. The season starts next week. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it is breaking news to me. I'm like, wow. And I've been reading stuff, too. I'm like, I just don't pay attention to, to the dates, I guess. it's uh, That just seems soon to me, man. I just, I, I guess everything, when you're younger, everything was whatever it was. But I thought we started later in the year. But, of course, the school years have now changed a lot, too. It may have been, you know, the, the thing is we're, no, we're on the front end here. You know, I think everybody else in neighboring states is normally a week later. But uh, with everybody making the tournament here, uh, you almost have to if yeah. you're playing this amount of games, uh, unless you wanted to cut the regular season down a week, uh, you almost have to start this week just because you you're, can't fit it in by Thanksgiving weekend otherwise. So, uh, but yeah, it does, you know, but honestly, for me, you know, you're kind of putting stuff out all summer in preview, uh, you know, formats and whatever. Uh, I'm kind of ready for the games to get begin by this point. Uh, but coming off a two week vacation, too, I also got a lot to get done. So that's a, <laughs> it does seem like it's coming kind of quick this year. Uh, you've done, you've done a lot of pieces with a lot of, a lot of quarterbacks to watch this year in that Indianapolis area, but all over the state. But, uh, especially up in the Indy, in the Indy area. Uh, that's a piece you had out of, what, a couple of weeks ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, there are there are some good ones. And I think maybe the best one is is Danny O'Neill, who's, you know, he can't, he can't be in the Mr. Football discussion yet because he's only a junior. But, you know, to me, he's one of the more uh, accomplished, uh, polished quarterbacks that I've seen at that age. Uh, he came in last year as a sophomore and, you know, 30 – touchdown passes and two interceptions against the schedule they played uh, is is really, uh, you know, mind-blowing, really. I remember covering the first game he ever started and, you know, feeling like he was like, you know, this is not – not uh, he wasn't overwhelmed. He's a 15-year-old sophomore playing at a, at a very high level. So, you know, he's getting some, some pretty big-time offers, you know, already. And, you know, as a quarterback, that doesn't always happen. You know, quarterbacks don't get a lot of – scholarship offers just thrown at him unless they're they're pretty dang good so you know he's probably the name to start with we've got another good one here who's not the biggest recruit in the world but nick patterson at mooresville uh who's putting up all kinds of numbers and he's gonna end up playing somewhere pretty good i think but uh but he's another one to watch but you know this is a year where a lot of teams too at the 6a level at least are you know Jaden whitaker is another one from brownsburg he's going to western uh, illinois but you know, this is a year or two where a lot of 6A teams around here are changing at the quarterback spot. So, you know, there'll be a new group of new group of guys to kind of cover and see. And then, you know, that that quarterback position obviously dictates how you how the team goes a lot of times. So, you know, that that's uh, anytime I look at, you know, how teams fare uh, going into the next year, I'm looking for returning quarterbacks. It's always a huge, a huge indicator on how how well a team plays in the upcoming season. So. You know that that's a big that's a big uh, issue. I think for some teams that are you know have state title hopes. Uh, so a, a team like Cathedral with O'Neill coming back as a returning starter, I think is a pretty big feather in their cap. I know uh, you got Christian Abney from Zionsville. He signed with Ball State. He's going to be a Cardinal. Yeah, and he's a guy who you know he's six foot five. You know, doesn't uh, have a lot of it. He got hurt last year, so he he kind of had to miss a few. Can't remember how many games he ended up playing. Only I think six or seven, but came in in the state championship, played really well, uh, and you know against that Cathedral team that I just mentioned. So he he's got some some promise to him. Obviously, it's like I say, six five, so he's got a pretty good size and good strength, good speed. Uh, just doesn't have a ton of experience yet, but uh, he jumped on that Ball State offer, and and I'll be curious to see if he gets. You know, as football recruiting goes, sometimes when you commit, that that's when the uh, schools start recruiting you who are at the yeah. higher level. So. I, I was going to say, did did you think that he might have committed a little soon with the senior well, season coming up? You know, I don't after I, being I, hurt. I think you kind of get locked into a spot. You kind of all, right, all right. I'm going to take this spot. If this is what it ends up being, he's he's happy being in Ball State. If if something else 
bigger comes along, then, then, you know, you can look at that. Uh, if, uh, if that works out for you now, so that doesn't always work out. I think some, you know, sometimes there's a coaching change and, you know, a bigger school will take a, take a chance on a guy and kind of throw an offer out there. And then, you know, you're kind of fighting for a spot. Maybe you're in over your head a little, not saying his case, that would be the, the case necessarily, but, you know, so I think he wants to get, and I think he can play at Ball State. You know, I think that'll be a good situation for him. But, you know, we this summer there was such a rush on, you know, and it's kind of every summer, but especially with the transfer portal. I mean, you just, you got to get locked into a spot. If you, if you want a spot, you know, otherwise your position, you could get locked out of it. You know, there's, there's, I won't mention who it was, but I know there's a kid around here who ended up committing to a really big time school. He, he didn't necessarily, you know, that wasn't his first choice, but his other choice, they got uh, his position got filled up before he could commit. So, you know, that that can happen. You know, that that happens at times and, you know, saw it firsthand with the kid here that I cover. So I think you just want to get locked into a spot. And, and I think coaches understand that's part of the game, too. But uh, that's why they pressure you a little bit to make a commitment. Uh, you, uh, you, you got. Go ahead. You were talking about. Uh, I saw some of the uh, the storylines heading into the 2022 high school football season. What are some of the early games on this schedule? Now that it's only a week away, and neither Jim nor I can believe it. Um, but what what are some of the early important big matchups that you're looking forward to right out of the gate? Yeah, there's probably three games next week that I'm, uh, you know, kind of debating well, which one I want to be at. I, Brownsburg and, and Ben Davis is one. Uh, like I said, Brownsburg's kind of a uh, maybe a little bit under the radar. Ben Davis, and a reason I really want to see that game is Ben Davis just clocked him last year in the in the uh, regional. Ben Brownsburg finally won a sectional for the first time uh, in I think uh, since 2009. So it'd been like 12 years since they'd won a sectional. They come out the next week, and I covered this game. It was cold. It was one of those nights where it was just kind of windy, and and Ben Davis just took it to him and completely dominated the game. And that was after Brownsburg beat him early in the season. So, you know, this sort of a rematch of that game. And I'm, I'm Browns. Ben Davis's quarterback uh, actually transferred from Brownsburg at the start of last year. So that's another kind of you know intriguing storyline to that game. But you know, that's one I would say. And then uh, Westfield's going to New Pal. Uh, New Pal is, is you know, they were eight and four last year, which is a really down year for them, but they have nine starters back on offense and defense and, and Westfield coming off back to back six, uh, a runner up uh, showings in state, but they lost a lot too. So, you know, New Pal's only a four, a team Westfield six, a, but I think that could be a really good, uh, really good atmosphere too. New Pal. I'm sure we'll have a huge crowd out there for that game. And then uh, the other one, uh, that I was looking at, and I'm trying to – oh, uh, Warren Central and, and Center Grove. Uh, Center Grove, 28-game winning streak and back-to-back 6A titles. You know, how do they play, you know, without, you know, Taven Jackson, who's down at uh, Tennessee now, quarterback. Uh, Caden Curry, who's at Ohio State, uh, defensive lineman. Uh, James Schott is at Michigan State, defensive lineman. So they lost a lot of uh, big-time talent, but – you know, I, I still think, you know, there's a good chance. I actually put out a Twitter poll yesterday, like, do you think Center Grove can win it again? And, uh, you know, just because I think they're in that discussion, you know, even though they lost a lot, they've still, you know, Eric Moore's been doing this for 24 years as coach, and I, I think they've got enough talent there. Uh, they're still going to be a problem. They're going to be a team nobody wants to play, especially in November uh, with that wing T offense. So, yeah, and Warren Central, you know, perennial power, uh, how do they – kind of had a down year last year. How do they bounce back? And if they can beat Center Grove and end their winning streak, uh, that would that would really kind of put them back uh, on the map as far as being a, a top contender. So a lot of intrigue, I think, in that game too. So, you know, I'd say you know, all three of those, and there's some other good ones out there too, but I, I would probably start, you know, with those three games as, as uh, our best, at least in central Indiana, going into next week. Uh, there, I know you don't cover uh, Southern Indiana, Floyd, New Albany, Jeffersonville, those teams. And New Albany opens up with Bloomington South, opens up the season. Of course, they had a good – I think they went to the semi-state last year. So uh, that's team you have to – and I think that uh, Tebow has said that um, they've got a lot back on that squad. You've got teams historically good down in the Evansville area, Castle, Heritage Hills, coming back off of the 93 team, Memorial, uh, who's been good down there as well. So – uh, a lot of good play all around the state, but when you're talking about Center Grove, man, they just kind of become a 
an athletics juggernaut in Indiana, not just on one side of the ball, but to do it in football, when you lose stars uh, like Taven Jackson and you're still looked at as a potential, that's mind boggling there. Uh, that's, that's, you, that's when you know you've got a system going. Um, and it's not just the luck of having a great athlete here and there. Yeah, I was talking to one of their, um, you know, somebody within their program this summer and, you know, the um, a booster or part of the booster club, basically a parent. And he was saying, you know, there's going to be people next year think we're going to be, you know, uh, down or, you know, because they, they did lose a lot. I mean, their defensive line last year was the best I've ever seen at the high school level. Uh, you know, they, you know, three guys who are, you know, Louisville, Michigan State, and Ohio State, you know, starting on the defensive line. So that was almost unfair, uh, in some, in some cases. So, you know, they're going to miss those guys. I'm not saying, you know, they're just going to keep dominating people like they did. And obviously, Taven Jackson was one of the best uh, quarterbacks in the state, uh, if not the best. So, you know, that'll be, you know, the, they're definitely going to be some growing pains, I think. But, you know, that, I think this is the type of team like Eric Moore, he, he loves, you know, even as good as they were, he would always, you know, they always kind of play up the us against the world and, you know, that them, you know, them being in that position where I think people are going to be doubting him now is kind of plays into his, you know, type of coaching anyway. So, you know, and, and they're always a very physical, uh, you know, matchup and, you know, they're, they're very good along the lines. And I'm sure they still will be. Uh, even losing all that talent. So the the question though, you know, they have a new quarterback who's Tyler Cherry who's six foot five and uh, he's got a big arm, uh, you know, but also like I mentioned, you know, you're, you're, when you start a new starter at quarterback, there's going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be always smooth transition, but, you know, but they lean on their running game so much too. And they have experience at that, that position that I think they're going to be our, it'll be just fine, I think. So, but yeah, they're the, they're kind of the, you know, in the last few years, I think they've kind of become the preeminent uh, program, football program in the state. Uh, the record speaks for itself uh, right now. There's not that there hasn't been this type of run in 6A or what used to be 5A since Warren Central did it back in the mid 2000s when they won four uh, consecutive state titles. So it's just not it's unusual uh, what they've done here recently. So you have to tip your cap to uh, to that staff and that program. Uh, and if they can do it again, I mean, that would just be because because I think, you know, when you lose that type of talent, this will be an ultimate test of, of kind of where you're at. But I, I definitely wouldn't count them out of being able to do that. And also Cathedral, how do they the Cathedral's moving up to 6A? So, you know, that'll be, you know, super interesting to me to see how they they fare. And I think they're maybe more talented overall, you know, top to bottom, at least, you know, the top in talent with Danny O'Neill at quarterback and drawn Tibbs at, at receiver and all those guys that they've got on the defensive side uh, that, uh, you know, are returning. So, you know, I, that'll be interesting to me. And they're in a different sectional than Center Grove. They would they would not meet until the semi-state round. But, you know, those matchups the last two years in the regular season have been phenomenal. You know, the the, the attendance of those games and the the buildup to it at the end of the season has been, has been awesome. So, and they're going to play again at the end of the year, but uh, – but I think it'll be uh, kind of this year they could meet in the in the uh, state uh, semi-state. So, you know, that'll be maybe just a precursor to what we could see come uh, November. Well, cool, man. I uh, have fun Friday night. Uh, are you just going to one location? Yeah, I think I'm going to hit a three-team uh, jamboree uh, over at Ben Davis. I ha you haven't locked that in yet, but I think that's – get a chance to see three teams instead of two. <laughs> 